All right, so what I'd like to do, because I have, like, 12 minutes, um, I want to talk about the Merfolk deck that made it to top eight and what I think I may or may not do using this information for GP Detroit, because I, I have decided that I'm going to take Merfolk. So, let's... That can be minimized. Yeah, so I love Merfolk. I'm a sucker for Merfolk. Um... Absolutely, Monolithus. Lithius? Yeah, just come find me, and you can always tweet at me if I'm playing hard to find. Um, I think someone told me there used to be Momir dailies, actually. Oh, Monolithius, thank you for following. Yes, Aman Haran, that was correct. Um, I was part of the announcement of the women's bathroom fiasco. It was pretty bad. All right, so mod yeah, modern is frustrating, but Merfolk is fantastic, and it can handle it. It can handle the Eldrazi menace. So, Merfolk it is. What they are playing that I'm not convinced of. So they're running three cavern. I've been running two, and I've been running an Oboro. I like that. Um, I also am running two Ghost Quarters, which I think is really helpful uh, at the moment. So I think I'm gonna stick with my current mana base. Um, I. Do agree with the fourth harbinger, sadly. Hi there, Speaker Ender. Oh, thank you, Tipian. I'll have to go watch that. Thanks. All right, so yeah, um, I think I'm going to add harbinger. I wonder if he's grabbing the binder since he left his computer down here. Um, I don't know, Snafu. Yeah, so his list is very good. Mine was not very different. Um, so let's see. Yeah, I think he is getting it. He had another Rejury. He had one less Master of Waves, but I really like Master Waves. I'm happier with Master of Waves than Rejury, so I think I'm okay there. This Phantasmal image. Whoop. What's that? What? Oh, Gutshot? Uh, Echoing Truth was disappointing to me. And I'm going to take out my third phantasmal image. Did you not bring the whole binder? Couldn't find it. It's in the bag. Oh, it didn't look. There. <laughs> Whatever. Um, <laughs> Alright, so, yeah. Echoing Truth is coming out. Phantasmal image is coming out. I'm going to bring in a Harbinger of the Tides, a, dis a Dismember, and a Vapor Snack, I think. I like those about his list. And that's going to be my... Pretty much the only difference is I'm going to have another waves over a Rejury, and I'm going to have, um, otherwise it's going to be the same. So you're taking your Echoing Truths out? And I did not like Echoing Truth. Putting in Dismember and Snag? And th uh, no, one more Dismember, one Snag, and a fourth Harbinger. What is the Harbinger replacing? Phantasmal Image. Okay. Number three. Harbinger number four is better than Phantasmal Image number three. Um, I... I'm not really sure. I haven't looked at it that closely, but I know I don't like playing the blue-white version. It's just not as consistent. Here's a hint. It ran Reflector Mage instead of Spreading Seeds. Yeah, it ran Reflector Mage instead of Spreading Seeds, which is just really, really silly. Like, I mean, he might have done a lot of testing and liked it a lot. That's fine, but it's very different. It's going to play very differently. And it's not the classic Merfolk. It's not the, the good Merfolk deck that I've found and I'm just tweaking little bits on. Yes, exactly. I won't forget that, Amon Haran. Yeah, Herkel. Okay, so in the sideboard here, so I, yeah, I'm changing three in the main, and I like his sideboard. I don't like Relic. I don't know. If if I'm going to run Gutshot and Snags, then I probably don't want to run Chalice. Is, is Gutshot and Snag worth not running Chalice? I don't know. Let's talk matchups. What matchups is so Chalice is really fantastic against Burn, Zoo, mostly Baby Zoo, um, Infect, uh, Bogles, 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 which is really hard, Affinity on zero, Living End on zero. Like, it's good in so many matchups. What is Gutshot good against? Gutshot will work against Infect mo sometimes. Yeah, yeah, you play it in your own terms, so you have to waste a pump spell. Right, so you have to pump their waste a spell. 
So it's only okay on it against Infect. It's good against Affinity if you do it at the right time. Um, oh, thanks, in Midnight. I appreciate it. I I broke a thousand followers on Twitter this weekend. It's crazy. Luca Drago, thank you for following. <sighs> thanks. Um, uh, where was I? Oh, um, Gutshot is good against Eldrazi Mimics. It's good against... Affinity, yeah. I it, said that, though. It kills X1s, which yeah. Pyromancer, Delver... Yeah, Pyromancer and Delver are both Bob. X1s. Bob is an X1. Kokoko, thank you for following. Yeah, I'm not... I've always found that Relic is just not quite good enough. It never quite makes the cut for my sideboard. Um, T-D-O-G-G-Y-1. Thank you for following. So really what you're looking at is that Gut Shot and Chalice on 1 only overlap for Infect. Yeah. And Vapor Snag can come, the one Vapor Snag can come out for one of my Chalices. And the other two Relics can come out too. Yeah, so. Well, I, there's two Gut Shot in the side. I want, what do you mean? There's no Relics main. Are you doing main board? No, I'm saying when I sideboard, the snag would come out when the thing came in, when Chalice came in. I just, I really like Chalice. I think I found Chalice to be very, very good, very, very helpful. Drake Gideon, thank you for following. You are the best, Keikolko. You and everyone else, but still the best. <laughs> All right, but yeah, Tech Edge I found is a little slow, a little frustrating. I still have the spreading seas. Um, and Kira didn't didn't impress me very much. Tech Edge has pretty much one job. It's Tron and Eldrazi right now. It's got two. Oh, I mean, Tech Edge has one primary job. It has splash damage against other things, but it's there for when you take Vile out. For when I take Vile out. But you're not doing it in this meta. No, I, and I don't like taking Vile out. Hi there, Einlanzer. Thanks. I had a lot of fun being on the feature match. Oh no, if you're going to be building Merfolk, absolutely keep your Chalices. Chalice is such a good card. I absolutely love playing Chalice. Yeah, um, so yeah, Chalice is going to stay in. I think three recalls is enough. I really do, especially if I'm running Chalice to hurt Affinity as well. Um, three Tidebinder Mage and two Negates. So that puts me at 11. I have room for four. Um, we've got three Gut Shots that we own. We have, we have two places. Oh, we have eight of them, and these are just ones that were out of the binder. Okay, that makes sense. Oh, because you couldn't find the binder. Duh, there we go. I did not make day two. I actually ended up going four and five. It's terrible. Um, uh, Tog, Tidoggy, or Tidoggy. Actually, I can do call you Doggy. Okay, so Doggy, um, there's not much to bring in against Eldrazi because Eldrazi is not the hardest matchup for us. It's not easy, but we can beat Eldrazi. It can be done. Um, it's really not that bad. Um, yeah, so I lean on my main board spreading seas. I can get as big as them. I can get as fast, I can be as fast as them. I can keep up with Eldrazi. Alright, so... Right. Yeah, with two Ghost Quarter in the main, which I'm running. Um, because I'm gonna keep my current mana base. I really liked it. It felt very powerful. Um, uh, so yeah, I think I'm gonna take Two Gut Shot, two Vapor Snag, three Chalice, three Recall, three Tidebinder Mage, two Negate. That's 15. That's my sideboard. Um, and then the main deck, a couple little changes that I said. So actually, I'm actually really happy with that. I'm really excited for, for this now. Yeah, so I'm going to have to get a couple of Gut Shots. I'm going to have to get another Chalice. I can get that from Card Hoarder tomorrow, though. Thank goodness for Card Hoarder. Saves my butt all the time. Um, yeah, put it together a bit there real quick, though. All right, so. Collection. Yeah, I have to finish my... Um, I'm in a league with Eldrazi right now. I have to finish before I can trade him. I'll need to do that tomorrow, probably. Yeah. Tomorrow's my draft, so I don't know. All right, so Modern Merfolk. You have two hours. 
I will. I don't normally draft it or start at one on Thursday. I do evening drafts or evening streams on Thursday. This that'll be different tomorrow because of the streamer showdown. That's I'm starting at three p.m. my time, so it's just going to be shifted a little bit. All right. So, oh man, they're so little. I think you're going to have to copy the deck because you're in a league with it, right? Or is that a different deck? What? Which it's deck? a different deck. Okay. I have Eldrazi in my play lobby or in the in the league. Okay. So um, we're going to start with the sideboard because that's what I just expl or just decided on. So we want to. Ah, I kept, I don't have enough hands. If I can type. Chalice of the Void. Tech Age out. Three Recall, two Negate, three Tide Binder. Um, and what did I say? Two Gut Shot. Thank goodness for Phyrexian Mana giving blue decks removal. I know, right? Phyrexian Mana is fantastic. I own a gut shot. That's fun. A modern masters one. Huh. Wonder where I got that from. Neato. All right. So, and then what am I missing that I just, oh, two vapor snack. All right. So that's the sideboard that I like. Okay. And then. Um, what did I say? I was going to bring in another Dismember. So, two Cavern, two Ghost Quarter, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten Island, Minamo, Oboro, and four Mutavolt. Then I got my four Vile, four Master of Waves, four of each Lord, four Harbinger, four Spreading Seas, four Silver Guild Adapt, two Phantasmal Image, Four Curse Catcher. I want Mara Reedry in here. Is this the one where you take in all of them out? Yes. Oh, wow. Which was bad. It was a very bad choice. Alright, so we want three Mara Reedry. No, he had it. What is different? What is not? This is not what matched up with. Because he had three Dismember and a Snag. Oh, I was only going to run two Reedry. Because I traded a Phantasmal for Harbinger, and I wanted to have four Master of Waves, so two Reedry was enough. That was what it was. So, only two Reedry, and then... Um, I need another Snag. Oh man, just let me do it, Magic Online. Yeah. Okay, so sort here. All right, so we've got Curse Catcher. We got one Snag Main. All right, so this is really interesting. Yeah, we're pretty good against creature based combo and any creature deck. We're really built to be successful against creature decks. <laughs> Did you see Playing's comment? No, it's scrolling really fast. Where's Playing's? There it is. Have you considered putting a die on top of your? die on top of your deck to remind you that you have a die on top of your deck to remind you to take over your vial. <laughs> I am not. <laughs> this is quite funny, though. Scape shift isn't bad. Um, we have a couple of negates to stop it, stop the shift itself, and we're just fast. Um, I absolutely love Curse Catcher. The Curse Catcher has saved me so many times because people won't play things until a turn later because they can't afford to pay for Curse Catcher. It's crazy how much just having a Curse Catcher on the field saves you. And then using it is great too, but when you don't have to because it's already stopping, then it just feels fantastic. Also, having a 1-1 Merfolk just get out there early, you can start beating down quickly, is really powerful. Um, Momir, M-O-M-I-R, to midnight, okay, um, I think I do do that one. Oh, if you copy Eidolon, oh, that's great, I love copying Eidolon with Phantasmal Image, Ooh, that's so much fun, it always throws the burn player for loop, because they're like, I have to burn her, but she's gonna take three, and I'm gonna take four from my lightning bolt, that's weird, 
It's fun. So usually they end up bolting the Eidolon taking four. Right. They normally bolt the Eidolon and take four damage. So that's what my Phantasmal Image got me. It's like, score! Awesome sauce. Yeah, what Carrick said, it's uh, Angry with Gods on turn four is because of Curse Catcher. Um, I have tried Kira. I'm on and off with Kira. It's with the metagame. How much removal is Yeah, it's with the metagame and the, the amount of spot removal, and she's out at the moment. But sometimes she's really helpful. So it's kind of one of those bouncy cards, but it depends on the meta and what I expect to see. <laughs> um, I have thought about Thassa before. She doesn't affect the board enough, so she's absolutely not worth it. I will not be running Thassa ever. So, ever. Ooh, wow, strong words. Okay, I guess some crazy, some different crazy shit can happen to the meta. <laughs> at which point I might consider running Thassa. But no, Thassa is not... What if Wall Tribal becomes tier one? If Wall Tribal becomes Tier 1, would Thassa even help? No, because you have Iron Law. Yeah. This is just dumb. No, so... No, Thassa just... She doesn't affect the board enough. She's a great card. She's a cool commander. Like, you can do a lot of cool things with her, but she just doesn't go with Merfolk. It doesn't work. Oh, yeah. The new Elder Ronda deck does run for Path. And... It's of, true. A lot of decks are packing Dismembers, both of which are really bad for Master of Waves, so maybe Kira is necessary to save the Master of Waves from all this non-red removal. But what am I going to have? What am I going to play? Like, I could play Kira instead of Ma uh, Mero Ranger, I guess. Zurai, thank you for following. I found, when we were talking about it before the last open, um, that Kira, no, that Mero Ranger just didn't have enough impact. I only wanted him when I was really trying to grow big, which just wasn't Often enough. So I could put two Kira in instead of Mara Regery. Or instead of Phantasmal Image. I love Phantasmal because Image. Kira it's so Phan good. Kira and Phantasmal are a non -mode. Kira doesn't protect your Phantasmal. Sure, but Kira protects everything else. And Phantasmal is weak on its own or with Kira on the battlefield, it doesn't change. So it's. Kira doesn't protect it, but it's not really a non -mode. It doesn't undo the benefits. So yeah, I'm kind of liking Kira better than Regery at the moment as well. And I was only going to be on two Regery. So I might switch those out for Kira. You could also just try the one up since Kira is legendary. Yeah, but if, I, if I'm worried about removal and I'm bringing Kira in to combat that, one of Kira is not enough to regularly combat that. It's just not. I don't... I really would love somebody... And if anybody's watching who can send this message to anybody, I want one of the pro players or one of the big guys who do a lot of really in-depth articles. I want to know why you would ever run one drops other than toolbox decks. One drops? No, not one drops. One ofs. I've sent you an article. You did? Uh-huh. A week ago. That's probably one of the ones that it lost on my phone when my phone crashed. There's another one. Oh, well, thank you. So now I can go read about one drop of one ofs. Now I feel really silly because it was out. Um, yeah, what you said, Dolph Malber, um, it's Regery is win more or it's really expensive. Sometimes its tapability is handy, but it comes in too late. The tapability is handy when you get to turn four. We don't do that anymore. No, we don't get to turn four off all the time anymore. It's not focusing on me. It's trying to focus on my... Okay. <laughs> it's trying to focus on my microphone. I don't know. That's strange. All right. Well, thank you for that uh, link. I'll probably go read that soon. Yeah. Uh, hippity long ears. I think that's a really good way of putting that. I agree. So, yeah, I think I'm going to take Rangery out and put Kira in. True, Darth Malber. Okay, so I've decided on my deck, awesome. which is super cool. All right, so let me do that on here. Let me reflect that. So, Regery out. Kira 
in. And that is 99% what I'm going to be taking to Detroit. Unless something else crazy happens in the meantime. That's terrible. Um, if you target phantasmal image... Oh, no, it's a creature, not target creature. Yeah, you can, you can make phantasmal a better thing and such. Okay. I think here is really... I think here is going to help because it's going to stop things from killing my other ones that matter. I don't like Spellskite. I don't find Spellskite to be useful. Spellskite is a one-time removal counterspell. Right. Kira strands removal in their hand. Yes. Um, I don't know if you could hear him. Um, Spellskite is a one-time removal counterspell. Kira strands removal in their hand because they have to use two of them. So, I just Kira is better. I've never I've never been a fan of of uh, Spellskite in this deck. It's great in other decks. In fact, almost can't live without it. So, you know, Swell's kind of has its place, but I don't think its place is in Marfolk. Yeah. So, in the next couple days, my plan is to finish out my Eldrazi League just so I can finish it. Maybe I'll win a couple things and get my play points back. Um, and then I can trade and get these things. Oops, sorry. And that standard deck that we were talking about. I'm looking at doing Bant, Bant Coco in um standard which looks really cool so i'm excited about that um i have tested seize claim sadly it's a one drop land destruction that is too slow <laughs> too slow and not good enough it's not been worth it sorry hi there the shadow titan yeah so seize claim was a potential for my sideboard for um Louisville, but it tended it ended up not making the cut, just like Relic didn't. And I still don't want to play with Relic. It doesn't seem good enough. I can use Tidebinder to tap down Tarmogoyf. And I can, you know, I'm not that worried about a lot of the graveyard stuff. It's just not an issue. And I can counter Living End and stuff. And Chalice is good against Living End. And Chalice living. is great against Living End. Chalice can hurt a lot of guys, a lot of Snapcaster things, because they're snapping back Bolt or snapping back anything that's one drop. What? Um, the Seize Claim against Eldrazi. Yes, that's what, we did try that. We tested that. He was on Merfolk, I was on Eldrazi. Um, and you found it to be too slow, right? Well, actually, no. You found it, you took out Curse Catcher for it. I, well, yeah, so I'll come over and explain the place. Yeah, because he, he was the one who actually tested it. Yeah. But so he found it to not be worth it, right? It was great. It was perfectly worth it against Eldrazi. Okay. What I did was I took out for Curse Catcher. And I put in four Seize Claim in the main board um, so that I would have a post sideboard 60 against Eldrazi. We tested 10 matches in a row with Merfolk on the draw every match. Long Lev, thank you for following. And within, in those 10, or sorry, those 10 games, in those 10 games uh, with Merfolk on the draw in every single game, Merfolk won six of them. So 6 4 against Eldrazi when we are on the draw is great. And Seize Claim helped that a lot. It was really necessary to get that big of a win advantage on it. And Curse Catcher is not great against them anyways. Right. However, what that does to our other matchups is just awful. Right. We need Curse Catcher for the creature matchups because it's just another 1-1 one -one that grows. We need Curse Catcher for the spell matchups because it slows them down. Mm -hmm. And Seize Claim is really only great against land-based decks or greedy three-color decks. Yep. So, it's great against Jund, and it's great against Tron, and it's great against Eldrazi, but Seize Claim is really just a bummer against most other decks. Yeah. And I only played Eldrazi once at this last open. Um, someone asked if there's a face that goes with a disembodied voice. Are you willing to share? Hello. There he is. <laughs> um, so yeah, it was good in some matchups. Um, is there, what are your reasonings for liking Spellskite over Kira? Um, because... If you've got a good argument or a good reason behind it, I'm definitely interested in hearing that as well. And this is directed at playing since 95, but if anyone else has a good argument that Skite is better than Kira, then I'm open to hearing that right now. Oh. Uh, excuse me. Oh, 
but I was hoping that they'd answer me. But then, yeah, I need to get off soon because we have plans this evening. But better blocker pre-boarded versus Vernon and Vogels. I mean, Hunter Nance runs Spell Skite. He's that's true. Hunter does. Hunter does run Spell Skite. Hunter Nance. He's the other pro player who plays Marfolk. Other pro player. I'm not officially a pro player yet. But soon. Soon is the plan. <laughs> um, it's easier, easier for you to kill Spell's Kite, so you should kill it. Or so I should play it. That's one reason, Hex. Um, so what Hexco said is one reason not to play Spell's Kite. Um, I took out the Reedry, is what happened. Shout out Titan. Um... Also, double blue is great when I'm running four Master of Waves. I want the Devotion. I have access to the blue because I'm running only blue. And Cavern of Souls, the only non-blue sources are two Ghost Quarters and four Muta Vaults. So I get double blue almost every time on turn two. And Caverns that are set on Merfolk. And Caverns Merfolk. that are set on Merfolk count for the blue. But not for Kira. But not for Kira. That is true. That is true. Cavern is very expensive. That is, that's correct. It wasn't when I got mine. I think we got our paper ones for like 11. And it's like well, 30 now. What was it when we got it? <laughs> they're 30 now. Yeah, they're, they're, like, we got them almost at the full price. At 30? No way. I thought we got them at like 11 or 15. We missed it. We did, we've had them forever. Uh-huh. What? The spike on Cavern happened a long time ago. So, I wasn't talking about Cavern, I was thinking of Chalice. <laughs> My answer was for Chalice of the Void, not for Cavern of Souls. Yeah, we got our Chalice is super cheap. Yeah. Cavern, Cavern of Souls was expensive. Yeah, we picked Caverns up when they were like 40, and they're 55 now. Yeah, yeah, okay. So yeah, we picked Caverns up at 40. I just had a derp moment, but they so... they like 20 a month before we got them. It was a bummer. Oh. Uh. Yeah, the double blue helps us with Kira, and we're going to have the double blue even without Cavern most of the time. Kira is going to be able to be played for ultimate weirdness. I mean, Reedry can come back later when the metagame fixes itself. Oh yeah, when the metagame is different, Reedry can come back in. Reedry is very powerful at certain times, and he works very well with Harbinger of the Tides. That's part of what made Harbinger really good and really playable. But he's just not fast enough now. He's very frustrating. Um, he doesn't do enough for three mana. I mean, look at the only which is really sad. Like, mm, yeah. I mean, look at the he only, doesn't look at the only things you have that cost more than two. There's only two cards. Right, Kira and Master Waves. They do way more than Ranger does. Kira way. protects everything you have, and Master of Waves creates board stalls or breaks through them. Right, exactly. Everything else is a two drop. We just we can't afford to play a three mana spell when the Eldrazi are casting four mana spells on turn two. Exactly. Uh, it's not seven cards. It is 15. It's just a scroll. Sorry. So I have three recalls, retype binder, and two negate that you are missing. Correct. You cannot vapor snag a master waves with Kira out. Um, vapor snag is not quite as good. Um, you have a one of vapor snag? I have a one of vapor snag in the main right now. That's what... Um, the top eight deck did. And I thought it was interesting. And it gets around worship, and it's decent. I think Vapor Snag's not bad here. I really think it was... I was almost put it in my main deck as well. And then it just got cut entirely because I decided that wasn't what I was trying to do. What do you think of cutting one Tidebinder Mage for one Herbal's Recall? Oh, three Tidebinder is so good. I don't know. Um... I find Tidebiter Mage to be very good. Whenever I need critical mass of Merfolk, he comes in. Whenever I need, like in the mirror match, whenever I, like I've got Chalice and Hercules Recall and Gut Shot now for Affinity and the Vapor Snags and Negates. I have all but three cards in my library or my sideboard that can come in for Affinity. Negate doesn't. Negate doesn't? No. We talked about that before and we brought it in for um, things like uh, Cranial Plating. Does that mean you're skipping your turn too when you're on the it only works when you're on the play, and you yeah. skip your turn two. Um, ghostly prisons. I don't really have one anymore. I was, I did run Echoing Truth, and I was really disappointed in it. 
this past weekend? Full disclosure, I ran Echoing Truth and was really pleased with it this weekend. Okay. Um, but yeah, with, like, Ghostly Prison, I intend to pay for one or two creatures to attack that are large. Um, Gutshot is something that, um, yeah, it kills Steel Overseer Mimic, Infect Creatures, um, other little guys. Just, it's very helpful in a lot of those little matchups. It helps, well, helps in Affinity. So, Nikachu started running it. He started running Gutshot? Nikachu did, yeah. Okay. And then Aaron Reed, who top aided Louisville, ran it. Mm -hmm. but you haven't tested it yet, right? I have not tested Gutshot yet, and I want to. I'm looking forward to it. But yeah, um, Nikachu, who I really respect as a Merfolk player and a Magic player in general, um, ran it, and the top eight Merfolk listed. And I used that just to see where our differences were and what strategies they had that were different than mine. And I think Vapor Snag was a hole that I, I had decided not to use, but was uh, something that I was missing that changed my ability to win some games. Over, tight, over Echoing Truth, though? Like, Echoing Truth... Echoing Truth is two mana. Yeah. Did you ever have an Echoing Truth in hand and say, if this were one mana, I would win the game? Because Echoing Truth is I don't know. That also helps... It doesn't deal damage. But it helps against non-creatures. Yeah, it does. I mean, that's the reason I ran Truth instead of Vapor Snag this past weekend. And Chalice. Right, and because I can't play Vapor Snag when I play Chalice. But generally, I'm not looking for those in the same matchups. You are with Burn. Oh, Burn's running Echoing, or Ensnaring Bridge now. Yeah, you are with Oh Burn. my gosh, Ensnaring Bridge is so frustrating. Affinity's running Ensnaring Bridge now. Oh my goodness, I am being hosted by somebody. Thank you for the host. Sorry it didn't show up on my screen. Um, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, Echoing Truth. You don't like Echoing Truth. Right, and the, the plan with Eldrazi is you have to slow them down a little bit and race them. That's the plan against Eldrazi. It was... Oh, it was a donation! Brain Maggot, thank you so much. I deserve it, dude. Buy some cards. Thank you so much, Brain Maggot. Oh, I really appreciate it. Oh, thank you for showing me that. I'm glad I didn't miss that. Oh, thank you. I might go get half of my third Chalice of the Void. Yeah, because it would be like half of it. Or a third of it now. Well, online prices don't do the same thing. Okay, what's Chalice online? Hey there, Fleet Mean Cheetos. It's 15 online. Yeah, I might go ahead and buy it. So, so now that you're... I mean, I really do think that running Chalice is a great reason to switch from Snack to Truth. Yeah, it's not bad. But then do I want my Truth's main board? I have one. One so, truth main board, one sideboard, or two sideboard? What else do I put in the side? I could do a third gut shot, maybe? Yeah, I think, yeah, I like that. Yeah, okay, that's interesting. So a gut shot, and a truth in the side, and a truth in the main instead of that snag. Let me do that online instead of my paper ones. Alright, so... We took out snag. Alright, I have to do this the hard way. That shot. Yeah, it says I have neg negative two in my collection. Um, echoing truth. And one inside. So that leaves us like this. But yeah, because I do want to run Chalice, and I really do want to run Chalice, I love that card. It's fun to play for me. It's really great. It's really great in my meta. It's great in what I expect to see in the meta. I mean, it's not good against Eldrazi, but it's against all the aggro decks that are, bringing, are being brought to combat Eldrazi. It's just, it's so good. Um, so because I want to play Chalice, Echoing Truth, there is a good argument for Echoing Truth over, Fanta or over Vapor Snack. And I, I think that's good. I think that's a good argument. Yeah, there what Carrie said there. Um, I yeah, I was just talking about this earlier. I do not 
care for spells kite. It's never been something that I'm looking for for my Merfolk deck. I think Chalice is really good. Yeah, and hitting Worship and Staring Bridge and Ghostly Present is good too. I, I think I think that's a great argument. I think that's why I did I did choose to run Echoing Truth over Vapor Snag this past weekend. Um it would be, but I've never actually seen it there. Rancher problem too is yeah, it's the same thing as engineered explosives on too. It's a huge problem. Yeah, it's it's a big problem. Um But unlike engineered explosives, Echoing Truth can bounce Ratchet Bomb before they get it to counter. That's true. That's true. Do you play Elves Jiskal? If you're running caverns to deal with chalices, I bet they're playing um, elves. Disdainful Stroke? One and a blue counter target spell with converted man cost four or greater? We're not a counter spell deck. We're not a counter spell deck. As you can see, we have two negates in the side right now. And negate is just purely better than that because it's counter target spell. Or non creature spell, I guess. So it can't counter a thought knot. It can't counter thought knot or, or um, large Eldrazi. But generally, what I'm trying to counter are not four mana. I'm using negate to counter. Um, the, the things that go I'm countering living end. I'm countering... What all am I countering? Oh my goodness. Board I, wipes. Board wipes. Board wipes. That's what I'm countering. <laughs> I just completely brain farted. I apologize. Martyr proc? Yes and no. Okay. So what is it? I don't really know what martyr proc is. Hmm. Good night, Darth Malber. And Duck Scythe, this, or Duck Scythe 22. Thank you for following. It counters worship as well. Yeah. There's more controlly version with wraths. Lovely. So an even worse and more annoying version of Soul Sisters. <laughs> Very nice. I like it. Go for it. Uh, okay, so in a lot of matchups, Chalice is on one. Um, just to stop burn spells and little creatures and things like that. What Reclusa 12. Thank you for following. Um, so like in burn, we bring in Chalice on one. Um, Saladin. Thank you for following. But you definitely put a second one on two if you get it. Right, but I'll put a second one on two if I get it. Um, I will play against Bogles. Chalice goes on one. Against, um, Baby Zoo. Chalice goes on one. Against Affinity and Living End, it goes on zero. Uh, oh, yeah, Whisperer in the Link. Yeah, you're good, no big deal. Um, yeah, links have to go through mods on my channel, but that's, that's all right. Um, yeah. So, that's what Chalice is really there for. That's, there's so many matchups, and there's others sometimes that come up and surprise you that it's really good against as well. Amulet Bloom was on zero back when Amulet Bloom was on zero, yes. So that's gone, bro. Thank goodness. Amulet Bloom was a challenging matchup. Ad nauseum, yes, we want it on on one if we get it early, and zero if we get it late. So they can we can't they can't counter our stuff with their zero mana counter spells. So yeah, ad nauseum is another great matchup with Chalice of the Void, and I did play them this weekend. I've seen them a lot more recently. Yeah, I just I feel like this is really a pretty good deck. I think this is where I want to be. I think it's going to be able to hold its own against the Eldrazi Menace. I really do. Sadly, I'm not going to join the Eldrazi Menace, even though that would be very fun. I would rather go with something I can do, play well, perform well, and win. That's my plan. And I can do that with Merfolk. With a little bit of luck and a little bit of skill and a little bit of playing tightly. Master Waves is so good against Eldrazi. Um, the announcers talked about that while I was, during my feature match. They actually said the previous um, match with, m what, Majors? Somebody majors on blue eye Eldrazi wasn't running them or wasn't running many of them, and it didn't seem like decks seemed to be moving away from it. Sarkin Volkswagen, thank you for following. That's awesome. That's a great name. I like it. Um, what was I saying? Oh, um, and they were saying that people are moving away from Master Waves. I think that if that's true, I think that's completely wrong, because Master of Waves is so powerful. It 
it lets you swarm the board, gets you ahead when you're at parity, it brings you to parity if you're behind, it can just completely annihilate all kinds of stuff, and the protection from red is just a bonus. Like and it's bolt proof. He's yeah, he's bolt proof. He's, he's terminate proof. Mm-hmm. He's pro Ren. The Reven, Reverend T Rex. Thank you for following. Michael Majors, yes, that's the name I was thinking. Thank you. Um, and if you have two master ways, you've got twice ish as many tokens that are now three twos, which is a much better power and toughness. Um, he was playing Reflector Mage, which is very different. He just went a different way with Smurfolk than I did or I would want to. Tuxdev says he regrets it. Tuxdev says he regrets the Reflector Mage shenanigans? I'm not Interesting. I'm not surprised either. Um, he is known for brewing up things and trying out really different things. So it was definitely worth a, an honest-to-goodness try. It did have a really funny effect on the commentary, though. Did it? He played right before you. He uh-huh. didn't run spreading seas because he's blue white. Right. Yeah. And, and then so they <laughs> they called her build the spreading seas build of Merfolk. Which mine's the normal build. It's like I'm really close to the normal build of like the the classic Merfolk build. Yeah, spreading seas has been a staple in Merfolk <laughs> as much as Lord of Atlantis for years and years, years and years. Years and years. Yeah, absolutely. Tidebinder Mage is wonderful. I love Tidebinder Mage so much. It's great in zoo. It kills or it locks down the Tarmogoyf. It locks down. It in fact, it locks down um, the the red one that you pay red and exile two cards from your graveyard. Lava to do Mancer. Lava Mancer, Grim Lava Mancer, yeah. Um, Grim Lama Mancer, ha ha ha. That's the new... Uh... I know, it's the Star City Games thing, that's why I said it. Uh, <laughs> it yeah, Merfolk is getting hated really bad by the things people are bringing in to hate Eldrazi, which is why Echoing Truth is really important. Um, worship, bridge, and damnation, or, or not worship, um, yeah, worship, and staring bridge, um, and worship. ghostly prison, and, and various wraths are what are coming in that are hard for us. We've got echoing truth to deal with those first three, and we've got, uh, two negates on the side to deal with wraths, we've got curse catcher that makes the wraths to turn slower. Yeah, and I mean... Wraths are just hard uh, for Merfolk. They always have been. But the Splash 8 is affecting your deck choice. It is affecting the things. Like, I'm running Gutshot now. That's never been something I've done before. I haven't even tested it yet, but I'm going to do that this coming week. I'm really excited. Seraph Corgi, thank you for following. Exactly, Unlonzer. Delay against anything I want to get tempo against? What do you mean? Oh, delay the card. Um, counter trigger spell, if it's counted this way, exile it with counters. Suspend three. So with suspend three. It's still coming. What? The spell still comes. Yeah, I mean, it still does hit the battlefield. We're not always fast enough to just win. Yeah, we're not always fast enough to win in three turns, so. Hi there, Mr. Thaddeus. We're talking fishies, but it's time for me to get off because it's five. Um... I used to run a deck with two spell pierce, main, and the negates in the sideboard and stuff like that. Um, some people play remand sometimes. Uh, so there are there are ways where you can be more counter heavy. I think Nikachu's high on remand right now. Nikachu is high on counter spells in general, including remand, uh, at the moment, and he's doing pretty well with it. It's just a different it's a different play style. I like being more aggro. He likes being more control and beautiful part of merfolk is that it's an agri control deck and you can tweak it to be more on one or one side or the other and i've tweaked this to be what i enjoy playing and what i think is powerful and going to win and mana leak also is played by merfolk um yeah so there's a lot of there's a lot of times where people won't play master of waves or any f- three or four drops and they'll just run counter spells so that they can protect all their two drops and vile gives you the ability to do that and vile does vile can help you out with that um because you can then play your creatures every turn, one every turn, and still hold up all your counter magic, which is really kind of cool. They're, they're not where you want to be right now. The, the meta is not in the right place for counter magic, I don't believe. And because of that, there's not a lot of counter magic running around, which is why I don't need more than two common souls, and I don't need more than two negates for counter magic wars. And it's just... I'm in pretty good shape here, I think. So. <sighs> yeah, but it doesn't draw a card, and the card draw is what helps a lot with Remand. 
All right. Well, um, ghostly flow is on. Ghostly flow. Oh, ghostly flow is on. All right. So 